jar changed the world of high jewelry. This is a relatively large piece, this bangle. If you see underneath here, there's actually a purple shimmer. And that is what changed jewelry history. It's the first piece that was done in titanium in high jewelry. My name is Sergio Andres, and I'm so excited to share my book review on Jar Paris Volume 1. Um, Jar is, represents Joel Arthur Rothenthal's um, jewelry. And Jar changed the world of high jewelry. One of the things that is important about high jewelry is about pushing the limits. And Jar did that for an entire generation. And he did it in a way that changed high jewelry forever. I'm really excited about this book. It's a monograph. It represents the 397 pieces of Jar's second show in 2002 at Somerset House in the United Kingdom. And I want to share my favorite three pieces with you and why. The first one I'm going to just jump right in is this zebra brooch. Uh, the first time that Jar really was, was found out about by the broader world was when he had a show in 1987 at uh in new york city and it was by invitation only the lighting wasn't necessarily perfect and everybody was given a flashlight to study the detail of each piece and this is one of the pieces that was created for that 1987 show and it is a zebra brooch it was done in 1987 and i think it is an utter masterpiece i if i had a choice of any piece of jewelry created by Jar, this is the one I'd be, because I think that it is timeless, classic, and surpasses the level of beauty of the mundane. It's made out of banded agate. Um, just an incredible vision to see this stone and to see this zebra come alive from this stone. Jar was one of the first people to get rid of as much, as much metal as possible. So you see these incredible ropes, which look as if they don't even have any metal holding together these stones. These are diamonds. This is probably done in silver. Maybe, and there's also gold, which was you probably used for the mechanism in the back. And then the level of detail of these plumes, these three plumes, not only give it a playfulness and a vibrancy, but they are exquisite. It's black and silver, and it's just a level of perfection that really solidifies uh, Jar's place as one of the masters of the Juilliard. This piece was actually just sold again in 2022. It was part of the Ann Getty estate. Ann Getty was an incredible tastemaker and owned a bunch of pieces of Jar's uh, jewelry. And it was sold for $550,000. Um, I wish I'd been able to get it myself. Uh, the next piece that I want to share with you is a piece that changed jewelry history. So this piece looks relatively ordinary if you look at it from the top. But if you see here, um, you see that there's actually a bangle underneath these exquisitely set um, uh, flowers. This is called the Mo Mogul Flower Bangle. It was also done in preparation for the 1987 show. And one of the things that Jar has always understood as a jewelry designer, and I think that he continues to push forward, is how important it is to celebrate the craft and the craftsmanship and the craftsmen. And when you're working with the best craftsmen in the world, not only do you get these incredible, you know, signature jar, uh, pave style, almost no metal pieces, but you also understand what the limits are. This is a relatively large piece, this bangle. And if you see underneath here, there's actually a purple shimmer. And that is what changed jewelry history. This piece was the first piece that I know of that was done in titanium in high jewelry. And it was done because Jar was looking for something that was lightweight enough so that the wearer of this piece wouldn't have a chunk of metal on their wrist. The brilliance of titanium is that it can also, through anodization, uh, have colors. This particular piece is a purple. And this was done in 1987. Right now, the world of high jewelry is filled with platinum pieces, or sorry, titanium pieces. But this was 36 years ago that he broke the ceiling of high jewelry and created an, and ushered in an entirely new world of high jewelry with this one piece. So I believe that this piece changed history. It's rubies, sapphires, amethysts, and green garnets 
with silver, gold, and titanium. And you see that titanium and bangle. And I don't know how many people foresaw how much this would change high jewelry. Titanium is notoriously difficult to work with. Um, one of the people that has brought it into this generation is Wallace Chan, uh, another an exceptional designer. But this piece is very important to me because it changed history. And the last piece that I wanted to share with you uh, from this book is, are these diamond knot earrings? And these diamond knot earrings are one of the pieces that inspired my jewelry design the most <clears throat> for a bunch of reasons. The first one being uh, the playfulness. Okay, these are represent grow grain ribbon. So it's black and silver with an exquisite line. Um, and that's just playful. It's not necessarily something that you would see. This is probably for a black tie event. And there's a left earring and a right earring so that a woman would have each side of her face um, optimized. And But the real treat for me is these this amazing grouping of diamonds here on the inside. And for me, having a aspect of the design be primarily for the wearer, for the person that these earrings belong to, having this peekaboo, having this idea that the world is more beautiful on the inside, that you're a more beautiful woman or man on the inside, and that the world doesn't necessarily need to, need to see it for you to know that that's there. That was incredibly inspiring for me. These were also done for the 1987 show. Uh, it, as a whole, this book shows all 397 pieces of his second show, which was done in 2002. Many of the pieces were lent by uh, the collectors and the pieces from the 1987 show, which really brought him onto the world stage. I think this book is absolutely incredible, and I would recommend it for anyone with a his, uh, interest in jewelry design, in the history of jewelry, in the history of jewelry as a craft. Uh, there's a lot of pieces here that are tremendously inspiring and that um, really set the stage and our foundation for a lot of the things that we see today. Uh, more than 35 years later. So thank you so much. My name is Sergio Andres uh, with Elegance Found. Hope you have a wonderful day.